circle of patrons out there. Good afternoon to all of you out there. And yeah, the happy sound of circular saws, hammering, and my neighbor building a deck. He's got a bunch of workmen out there building a deck, so pardon the noise. But what we have here is Nick Ross just sent me this and he asked me, FC, you got any of these nice Remington 405 grain bullets for the 4570? What happened is I bought a lot of them. I'd like to share some of them with you. And look at these things. Well, those Tennessee boys really know their bullets, especially down there near the Cane Tuck border. So I went ahead and checked, and not only are Remington bullets not available, but Remington brass, Remington primers, none of it is available. And I remember not too long ago, you could get Remington brass, you could get Remington primers, Remington bullets, they were plentiful, they were available. So what happened to them all? But let's look at these 405, let's look at these 405 grain 4570 bullets from Remington. Well, first and foremost, they are 0.457 in diameter, and that's perfect for our 457 diameter groove in our 4570 barrels. It's perfect. But look at these bullets a little bit closer and you'll see they have a very interesting design. And that is, there's a little step where the ogive is, where the nose is actually smaller than where the ogive starts. That's close to where we crimp the bullet. So the nose is 0.446 inches in diameter because the nose needs to be able to slip between the rifling lens in the barrel. And this is important for all of our 4570 bullets. If the nose is long at all, it has to be small enough to go between the lens, which is usually around 450 or less. And less is better because that's function. If the nose is bigger than 450, the bullet won't go into the chamber or the barrel unless it's seated really deep and that's not desirable. There you can see the narrower nose section right there. The ogive is right where that little ridge is just above the center of the screen. Now I weighed this, it weighs 411 and a half grains. Call it 412 grains. So they're heavier than 405, but that's okay. Nice jacketed bullet. These are great for the 4570. I'm glad that Nick Ross has a bunch of these, and I'm also glad he was willing to share some of these with me. It'll be very interesting to shoot these. So thanks again to Nick Ross. Now, between Nick Ross and Walter Bunning, John Tulizinski, and also dug up in Redding, California. Seems like they're sending me a lot of comments and every comment they send me, especially from Doug up in Redding. I mean, every comment that Doug sends me gives me ideas for more videos. But this one from Nick, when he sent me this, I'm sure he didn't think that it would kick off some ideas for videos. But Remington Bullets. Now I happen to have a history with Remington bullets. Let me show you what I have. Well, what you're looking at is Larry Potterfield's volume number two book of short stories. And you know Larry Potterfield's the one that runs Midway USA. Well, I've been a customer of Midway USA ever since uh, the inception of Midway USA. We go way back to get... I think what happened was he just sent me this book out of the clear blue because I think he's got this book coming out of his ears and uh, he decided to send some of these books out to his longtime customers just kind of like a thank you so this is a nice book one of my first purchases with Larry Potterfield Midway USA was the Remington hollow base wad cutter bullets for the 38 special because I was shooting PPC at the time and I needed lots of bullets. Lots of them. So what you're looking at 
is a box of Remington bullets. You see, Remington Arms Company, Lenoki, Arkansas. So Remington would sell these bullets in crates, but Midway sold them in 2,000 round boxes. So I would buy these things like three boxes at a time. And what you see here are some of these hollow base wad cutter bullets. They're swedged and they're very fine 38 caliber wad cutters, perfect for shooting PPC. So I would buy these in 2,000 round boxes. I'd buy three boxes at a time. And at the time, get this, I remember this very well. Less than four cents a bullet. It was less than, than somewhere around $70 for a, a box of 2,000. These bullets are lubricated with a kind of a graphite lube and shot them a lot of times with a powder charge of 2.8 grains of bullseye powder. It was perfect for shooting these out to 25 yards. Yeah, I remember it shot a lot of PPC and uh, we competed for these little trophies. The little trophies were like a, a cop in a combat crouch and then it was engraved that you won whatever it was uh, classification of PPC. So I had about, oh, maybe seven or eight of those trophies and my wife uh, threw those out because they were gathering dust. Wish I had those right now. It'd be kind of fun just to show them to you. But I didn't think I'd be making videos. Well, but then I went on to shoot Ipsic and had uh, custom comp guns made to shoot the 45 ACP round out of customized 1911s. And now you get a lot of the features that we had to pay real good money for. You get all those features now, factory stock included in the gun. So uh, it's amazing. We had to be beta testers, but that was the 45 ACP. Shot that for years and lots of them. When we started shooting steel, the 38 Super and the 9mm became very popular. And uh, steel shooting was every Saturday night for years. And I shot these Remington 115 grain jacketed hollow point bullets. And these are cheap. And you bought these for 2000 So this, this is a 2000 round box. And you see that this box is fairly well gone. But I bought these in multiple box orders also. As you see, there's another one over here that I've got that's new. This is a full box of 2,000 of those jacketed hollow points. And this is the Remington round nose jacketed hollow point as you see right there. So I don't even think Remington's making this bullet anymore, but these are great bullets just to shoot at the range. And um, these are great bullets just all around, but they, there's better technology now, but nothing wrong with these jacketed bullets. So yeah, I still have a bunch of those from, you know, left over. Now I'm sure you out there who I've been reloading for a while remember buying Remington brass and all this kind of thing, especially Remington primers. Because we like Remington primers. They're, they just work fine. In fact, I think when I did the varmint shooting out in Williams and Weed, California, we used Remington primers. But nowadays you can't get anything. And... It's not all blamed to supply chain problems. I think what's happening is that the government contracts are using up all of Remington's production so they don't have anything left over to sell as components. That might be it. But at any rate, uh, hopefully someday in the future we'll be able to buy Remington products again in component form. Fortune Cookie 45LC from the Hot Lead Zone. See you next video. Bye for now.